So the strength we have calculated only is only for one course. So this type of mapping strength has to be calculated for all the courses except the elective subjects or elective courses. So attainment of POs and PSOs, the formula used is attainment level of PO or PSO is equal to average attainment of relevant COs multiplied by the scale factor. And scale factor is actual mapping strength divided by uh, maximum mapping strength and maximum mapping strength is 3. So in case of any course, if uh, any CO, if the mapping strength is 2, then the scale factor will be 2 by 3. And if the maximum uh, mapping strength is 3, then this is the highest uh, scale factor. That is 1. That means average attainment level multiplied by 1. So the scale factor will not at all affect the attainment level. So it is also important to have higher values of scale factor uh, to get better attainment level. And the average attainment level of CO can be obtained from three point, uh, criterion 3.2. These values we will get from criterion 3.2. We are discussing criterion 3.3. So in the previous criterion 3.2, we have already calculated uh, the attainment levels. That attainment level multiplied by this scale factor. So in criterion 3.2.2, we have already calculated the attainment levels. So for our example say, for our subject or course for which we have find out the uh, mapping strength, say for that subjects or course, these are the attainment percentage. For CO1, attainment is 59%. For CO2, attainment is 65%. For CO3, attainment is 56%, and so on. So this comes from the uh, criterion 3.2. And this we get from criterion 3.3. Just now we have uh, calculated for PO strength is 2, for PO5 strength is 2, for PO6 2, and so on. I repeat, the attainment of course outcomes of all courses which respect to the set attainment levels are already recorded in criterion 3.2.2. For this, the targets were set for both internal assessments and end semester examination and the attainment level for each course was computed. So the calculation is something like this. This is PO4. Strength is 2. So this is the scale factor 2 by 3. 59 is the attainment level of CO1 and 65 was the attainment level of CO2, 56 was the attainment level of CO3, 58 was the attainment level of CO4, and for CO5, the attainment level was 50 from the previous table. And divided by 5, because there are 5 COs, so this is the average attainment level multiplied by the scale factor. So this attainment level comes out to be 38.4% for PO4. So the calculations are same. Uh, we take another example, PSO1. PSO1 was addressed by CO3 and CO5. And for PSO1, the scale factor, uh, sorry, the strength was one. So one by three is the scale factor and 58 was the attainment level for CO3 and 50 was the attainment level for CO5. So this plus this divided by two, that is the average uh, attainment level for both CO and CO3 and CO5. And 
the attainment level comes out to be 18 percent for PSO1. This way we have calculated or computed the attainment level of PO and PSO related to only one course having five COs and these five COs address three POs and two PSOs. If we rearrange this data, the attainment of a sample course, that is our course name was EE, Environmental Education. These are the POs and these are PSOs. Name of the subject or subject code. And this way the mapping strength and this will give us the attainment levels from the previous table we get. So this table shows the final data for POs and PSOs attained through a course called environmental education. The attainment level in third row, that means this row, are functions of function of strength. It depends on the strength. If the mapping strength is more, the attainment level will be more. And from this table we can see POs 4, 5 and 6 and PSOs 1 and 3 are attained by this course and also by other courses. The attainment of this course is 38.4% for PO4, for PO4, PO5 and PO6. And the attainment of PSO is 18% and that is for PSO1 and PSO2. The course contribution of all courses over each PO and PSO are to be computed for final evaluation. So this way, if there are say 40 courses, so we'll get 40 such tables. And for all these, we have to find the attainment levels based on the strength and the CO attainment. And finally, we'll get one table, which will be tabulated for all the attainments and average of that will be counted. The final table for all the courses will be like this. This way we'll put all the course names and this way the program outcomes and PSOs. Only average attainment level we'll consider here. Uh, finally we'll get one average value. We only consider this uh, just sample value only. So if for our program, PO3 has the average attainment of 52% and PSO1 has average attainment of 28%. This way we will get the attainment levels for all the POs, 10 POs and 3 PSOs. So that was direct attainment level. Now after computing the direct attainment level, next step is to uh, compute the indirect attainment level of each PO and each PSO. So indirect attainment level is calculated based on student exit survey, the outgoing students after completing the final year or final semester are uh, asked to give uh, feedbacks that is called the exit survey on about the program, not about a particular course, about the whole program. They are asked to give the feedbacks. Uh, employers are also asked to give, give some feedbacks on the program. The employers may be contacted from through the alumni who are working in different companies and government sectors. Similarly, for co-curricular activities, so properly framed rubrics, this indirect attainment level can be calculated. And the overall attainment level is a function of direct attainment level and indirect attainment level. 
So 80% weightage is given to direct attainment level and 20% weightage to the indirect attainment level. DA is direct attainment level. So this way we will get the total or overall attainment level for each PO and each PSO. So for as a sample we can take, suppose the direct attainment level from academic activities is 28% and or 0.28. Indirect assessment based on sur surveys and others is 25% or 0.25. So total attainment level comes out to be 0.74. From the polytechnic perspective, it is assumed that while deciding on overall attainment level, 80% weightage may be given to the direct assessment and 20% weightage to the indirect assessment as stated by the SAR guidelines. If the program uses different scheme, it may be 70% versus 30% also. And for that, the supporting justification has to be produced before uh, to the visiting team. Surveys and analysis are to be customized to an average value as per levels 1, 2, and 3. And the total attainment for PSO1 comes out to be 0.274 or 27.4% in our calculation. Such calculation need to be carried out for all POs and PSOs. The targets have to be set for the program based on the enrollment quality, institute infrastructure, and past history, etc. Setting up high and unreasonable target is not encouraged, but the achievable and realistic targets with continuous improvement is more important. So next step is program level quality look. So in our calculation, if the attainment is more than the set target, then a realistic higher target level is to be set with recommendations of new inputs if necessary. But if attainment level is less than target, that means attainment is not achieved, target is not achieved, Action plan for improvement with necessary actionable inputs at course level, in the semester level, and program levels are to be implemented. So this is the end of this process. So closing the loop is one of the most important link for continuous improvement. But it is also seen as one of the weakest link for many obvious reasons. Lack of team effort, ineffective assessment tools, inadequacy of resources, etc. are some of the identified areas of concern in many institutes. So based on this, while closing the loops, plan has to be sorted out and that will be implemented for improvement in the next academic sessions. As an example, for a mechanical engineering program, one action plan may be introduction of say 45 days certified AutoCAD course for fifth semester students if the existing curriculum has not included AutoCAD as a course. Let us consider another example. Maybe the revival of communication lab. The existing communication lab is not working or due to unavailability of some, some software or some experts and so, so on. For in any case, for any action plan, the cost involved in the process has to be estimated by the department 
proposal forwarded to higher authority. The efforts made by department to continuous improvements should be documented and the visiting team will check the records. Again, NBA accreditation is supposed to bring a cultural change in education system and central idea is to initiate the process with social responsibility. Closing the loop refers to a process in which the outcomes of the system feed back to readjust performance of the system by modifying the inputs. So, thank you. This completes our discussion, calculation of attainment level, which starts with setting target and finishes with the closing of the loop and statement of action plan. Thank you.